Have you ever heard somebody say, God has told me to do something or to say something and wondered, I wonder how they knew it was God? I wonder how God spoke to them? Or have you ever um, had a strong conviction that God is saying something to you or calling you into something or giving you something, showing you something, um, and that somehow you just know it's from him? And that one of the signs of knowing it's from him is that you have this hope, this incredible hope in believing. In Luke chapter 2, um, as we get to the end of the sort of nativity story of, of Jesus' birth, we have this lovely uh, cameo of Jesus being brought into the temple uh, on, as eight days old. So let me just read um, a few verses from Luke 2 for you. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him, as Jesus, to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, that's, by the way, that's circumcision. Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people. A light for the revelation of the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. So a fairly familiar story and some beautiful words that we repeat, don't we, in, in various songs and, and liturgy. And notice several things here that it tells us that the Holy Spirit was on Simeon before Pentecost. It was re he was revealed uh, by the Holy Spirit, we hear, that he would see the Messiah before he died. So how did he know? How did that happen? How did God reveal that to him? And then on that particular day, how did he know that it was this baby and not that one or not the one from two days ago? How did he know that it was this baby? How could he be so confident and so confident as to say, OK, God, fantastic, that's it. I can go. I, you can let me die now. I can go in peace. I've seen your Messiah. My eyes have seen your salvation. Now, the last six months, I have been working with the Torch Trust. Um, some of you may know them based in Market Harbour. Uh, this is a, a Christian charity for blind people. And working with them and working with several blind people, um, I've begun to be much more careful about language I use. I, I often talk about seeing things. You know, it's nice to see you um, when you have a Zoom meeting. Well, do, do you know, for some people, actually, you know, they can't see you. Um, they're blind. And so I've become a lot more sensitive to the language of sight and seeing. So when I read uh, this passage and it says that Simeon said that my eyes have seen your salvation. H how... How did he know? His eyes saw a baby. They didn't see the whole of God's salvation plan. They saw a baby. And so clearly he was seeing something. The word we're using as seeing here was something different. And, and I think there may be a clue uh, that we get from, from Paul in Ephesians 1. Let me just read to you Ephesians 1 verse 18. I pray that the eyes of your heart, notice that, the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. 
the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. The eyes of the heart. Simeon's knowing that he was going to see the Messiah before he died was a thing of the heart. Simeon's seeing this particular baby and knowing that he had seen God's salvation was a seeing of the heart. He was recognising this baby, not through these eyes, not through the eyes that he was using to see the world with, but through the eyes of his heart. Now, most of us have the wonderful gift of sight, don't we? Uh, and I have appreciated that more and more as I have begun working more with, with folks who are blind and don't have that gift. But we take it for granted. But how good are we? How good am I, actually, at seeing with the eyes of my heart? Do you know, in my experience, beginning to learn to do that takes stillness. It takes some slowing down. It takes some time. It takes drawing close and into the presence of the Father so that we can get to know his heart. So my prayer for this year ahead, 2021, is that I and, and friends, I pray for you too, that we will learn to see with the eyes of of our hearts, that we will learn to know God's voice, uh, speaking within, the gentle whisper that we hear. Because as happened for Simeon, and as, as I think happened so often, actually it's when we do that, that we receive the gift of hope. And just as Paul says in Ephesians 1, as your eyes of your heart may be enlightened, in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. So if you are looking at this year ahead and feeling a little hopeless, maybe actually exercising, beginning to learn to see with the eyes of our hearts, slowing down, being still, learning to be in God's presence, to listen, not only will enlighten the eyes of our hearts, but give us the hope we so desperately need. Amen.